Hello, everyone. Welcome to Big League Dreaming, the podcast, a show about fulfilling your dreams and taking it to the next level. We re- really appreciate you being on today's show with us, and we have a, we have a fun one in the store. We hope you like it. But let's first uh, tell you a little bit about Big League Dreaming, the podcast. It is a show with a dad and his three sons uh, reliving uh, the game that they love so much, but also not just talk about nostalgia, but also looking forward to about what the things that we're excited about for the upcoming uh, season. It is uh, January of 2024, season, uh, what do we say, Zach? Uh, Zach Gonzalez, the oldest son, is with us today. Zach, what is, is it season three for us already? It's a season four. This is season year four, four of the podcast, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Time flies. I mean, it felt like yesterday we were starting this podcast. Yep, 2021 was our first year. Uh, so this is year four, season four, I guess you could say. Pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I just got done some time spending with you in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. But we should let everyone know that the way this format works is it's dad and his three sons talking about baseball. Today we only have one son on the podcast because the other two are tied up with work and work, I would say. Right, Zach? <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But I'm kind of glad that it's just the two of us. And no offense to the other guys. Um, Zach is the oldest. He's the Mariners fan. He's a graduate of uh, Comstock Park High School in Grand Rapids area. Plays college ball at Jackson College as well as Davenport University. He lives in Charlotte, North Carolina now. Still involved with baseball. Huge Mariners fan. And um, he has something in common with our guest, which I can't wait to get into. Um, Son number two is Ty. He's based in Grand Rapids. Coached a little high school baseball after his college days. He played for two seasons at Kalamazoo Valley uh, Community College in Kalamazoo, where he played every position but shortstop and center field, I believe. Is that right? Shortstop? I think it was just shortstop he didn't play. I think he played center field as well. And then uh, Zane Gonzalez is on number three. He is still in baseball. He's coaching full-time at uh, Indiana, Indiana University at South Bend. He is a recruiting coordinator and the pitching coach, associate head coach for Doug Boozy. I know they're getting ready for their new season. I'll be down there next month to help them at their annual banquet, and I'll be emceeing their annual banquet, and hopefully we'll get a chance to see his team play this season. All right, uh, Zach, you ready to uh, – I, I, I said, like, we just saw it. We spent some time together. This is great. Uh, I know. We, we talked to each other on International Signing Day, and that was fun. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's get going. Okay, let's introduce our guests. Uh, this is uh, I've been look, I've been looking forward to having this guest on for many years, many seasons. But I've actually been wanting to talk to him for many years, I should say. Uh, his name is Andy Van Hecken. Andy, say hello to everyone out there. How you doing? Thanks for having me on. Well, we really uh, appreciate you being on the show today because um, there's just so much to talk to you about. Yeah. You and Zach actually have. Uh, a close tie, which you don't really have never talked before, right? This is your, your first time talking together. Yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, I'm very interested to see what, what the connection is here. Um, <laughs> well, I can't wait to tell you about that. But the reason I've been wanting to talk to you for years is because, you know, you your story is really interesting, right? I mean, I think it's a made-for-TV movie. It's a book in its making, right? It, it's got this, there's a lot to it, to your story. Uh, let's kind of relive a little bit about where people may have heard the name. Andy Van Hecken because because okay. Andy Van Hecken is a is a piece of baseball history for Tigers fans um, everywhere who watched you on the big stage at Comerica Park uh, 20, 2002 you come up in September and you throw probably one of the most amazing games in Tiger history where you threw a complete game shutout against the then Cleveland Indians and uh, I think was that a four hitter three hitter um I don't know I. Th- I feel like it was uh, – there were certainly guys on base, it seemed like, every inning. So it may, may have been seven or eight. I don't know. But, yeah, I, I weaseled my way out of a few innings. Um, but, yeah, it was it was obviously a very, very memorable night for me and my family. So, um, yeah, it was great. Well, let's set the stage for a moment because I watched the, the replay of that final out on YouTube when Bobby Higginson catches the ball in left field. And your dad is holding up a camcorder. <laughs> yes it is very dated um to go back and watch but yeah it was he was pretty excited i know i i think they had a, a few family members uh taping the game on their vcrs back home um again to date myself here but um yeah it was there's a lot of funny things that stick out to me watching that back well a lot has happened since 2002 we'll talk about that on today's podcast and then we'll talk about this connection between you and zach that you don't know about um but let's talk about 2002 real quick um 
a lot of Tigers fans will remember that day. I mean, do a complete game shutout against Cleveland. And, mm. uh, you know, you, you have, you come up in the September call up, you had bounced around in the minors. You got drafted in 1998 by the uh, Seattle Mariners. You come to Detroit. You actually played for the West Michigan Whitecaps where we, we are based in Grand Rapids for a season. Um, take us to 20, 2002. And how are you, how are you feeling? And, that September call up, what was it like? Yeah, it was it was kind of a weird year. Um, I had been pretty successful my minor league career up to that point and kind of made stops at each um each level. Um I started the year off in double A and kind of got off to a rough start. Um and then started to pitch better. Um and then I think one of my last starts there, I kind of tweaked something a little bit in my shoulder. You know, I was never a very hard thrower. You know, I would probably top out at 90, 91. Um, and that last start, like I said, tweaked something. Um, and I got called up to AAA. Um, and it wasn't anything serious. So, you know, I just thought I'd go up to AAA and see what happens. Um, and my velocity definitely dipped down to the mid-80s. Um, but I was able to somehow just kind of keep guys off balance and probably was hitting a little bit or throwing a little bit below hitting speed um, and end up throwing really well in AAA for, you know, the month and a half that I was there. Um, I think I ended up going five and oh, and then, you know, like you said, September came around and um, they called me up and uh, yeah, it's obviously the first game went well, same thing was my arm still wasn't feeling great, but um I was able to kind of change speeds, you know, I was, I was basically back then to seam change up um, and mix in my curveball. Um, so, yeah, kind of the same thing below hitting speed, probably mixing it up, um, you know, keeping guys off balance. So, um, but yeah, that was, it was a fun year in, in Toledo. Um, that was the first year of their new stadium downtown. Um, the team was playing really well. It's the first time they, qualified for the playoffs I think since the 80s um, so there was a lot of excitement in Toledo and it was really really fun to play there um, and I think the night before I got called up we clinched the playoffs so it was kind of a big party we all did the lap around the field you know giving high fives to the fans um, and then the next day I went into the office and, and got called up and obviously that was another very special moment for me. So. The 2002 season for the Tigers fans was not very good. It was 100. <laughs> they lost 106 games, dead last in the American League Central. Comerica Park had only been open for a couple of years, you know. Mm -hmm. So you went from like the highs of winning, winning in yeah. Toledo to, to Detroit. But you have, you know, you 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 uh you obviously made an impressive debut. Zach, do you remember uh 2002 at all? Yeah. So yeah, obviously the first game. Um, I was a little nervous at, at first, um, you know, but once I kind of started warming up and got into that routine that, you know, I pitched a few years in the, in the minors. So I got a routine down and um, once I started warming up, it was pretty good. And I think just that first batter, I felt a little bit of nerves and I think it was Milton Bradley was the first guy up and he swung, hit the first pitch and it was, he hit it pretty good, but I think he hit it right to Robert Fick for an out and I think after that I just was able to relax I was like okay you know we got one out at least <laughs> it's not going to be a total disaster um and I think I got my only strike out of the game on my next hitter so after that I was like okay you know I can at least act like I belong here for a little bit um and we'll see what happens and like I said I I, I gave up a lot of hits I, I I think I walked Tommy once um you know, he's just that guy gets in the box. You're like, well, I haven't, I haven't seen one of these guys in the minor leagues before. Um, so, yeah, there's some some moments there where I was able to get out some jams and um, um, pitch pretty well for for the most part. And um, so after that game, I was lucky enough to pitch at Yankee Stadium against Roger Clemens. Um, so that was a you know. You got my, I got my debut and then next game is, uh, in Yankee stadium, like I said, against Clemens. So, um, it kind of, kind of gets better and better. Um, and again, I was able to pitch pretty well there. I think, uh, I got a no decision maybe. Um, 
And then, um, yeah, the rest of the season went by, you know, I had a bad game. I ended up getting hit in the thumb on a, on a ground ball and got taken out early. Um, even though I wasn't pitching well at all, it was probably a blessing <laughs> that I got out of there. Um, and then pitched okay against the Yankees again at home and then finished up against the Blue Jays and, um, did okay. I think I gave up a few more runs, but was able to go six innings or something like that. Um, but yeah, it was, like you said, it wasn't a good season for the Tigers overall. We had a lot of young guys come up in September. Um, and, you know, they had fired uh, Phil Gardner early in the season and Luis Pulhos, who's, that's always my favorite question when guys, you know, I'm, I'm meeting new people and, you know, they ask about me being with the Tigers and, that's always the question I give them. I was like, I'll give you a hundred dollars if he can name the manager at the time and nobody can come up with it. Um, but Luis Pulhos was the manager. He, uh, he was my manager in double A the year before, and we had a really good team and I pitched pretty well um, at the end of the year for him. So we had a pretty good relationship and Steve McCaddy was um, our pitching coach. Um, again, he was in double A the year before. So we had a developed a relationship so it was, it was nice to go up to the big leagues and have those guys there I had known a couple guys um, Ramon Santiago was there and we had um, come up through the minor leagues kind of together um, and there are a few other guys there that I knew that uh, you know just kind of takes some of the pressure off knowing some of the guys in the clubhouse but um, yeah it was definitely a, a difficult season for them it was fun for a lot of us to get that experience um, in the majors for the first time um, and you know some of us had some success and um, you know unfortunately that was the only chance I got there um, but obviously I'll remember it forever and it was it was you know, I was very lucky to um, to get there in the first place. Well that was our Cooperstown year right right dad 2002? Yeah, uh, travel well, ball all over first year with Bam out of Lansing. So yeah, that was like a really fun summer, um, getting to travel all over the place doing that. Well, Zach, I'm sure you have some questions for for Andy, and we're going to talk about the connection in a minute. But the reason we're one of the reasons we're also talking to to Andy Van Hecken, by the way, folks, uh, is that he is the new pitching coach at Calvin University in Grand Rapids. I believe it's his first uh, first job at that level, the collegiate level, Division three school. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But, uh, Zach, any questions for Mr. Van Hecken about this time of baseball career for you? Because as you mentioned, you were just a kid playing travel baseball and yeah. you're, uh, getting, getting to learn all this. I mean, you hear names like Jim Tomey, Roger Clemens, probably <laughs> brings back names uh, or some, some nostalgia for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess it was that whole day of your debut, like your favorite Tiger memory. Do you have like, is there something else that would could could be considered your favorite Tigers memory? Was it when you got the call? Uh, was it walking into you know the stadium for the first time? Was it traveling with the team? What uh what are some of like your favorite memories come back from from being a Tiger? Um. Yeah, I mean, you kind of, kind of, you mentioned a few of them. Um, getting the call was special. Um, my manager in Toledo was Bruce Fields, who was also my manager with the Whitecaps. And he still to this day has been my favorite manager that I've had. Um, and, you know, I just, I, I was always disappointed. He never got a shot. Um, I think the following year, um, you know, they hired Alan Trammell as the manager, and I think Bruce was the hitting coach. Um, and I think he's been a hitting coach ever since. Um, but I always thought he was such a great manager. Um, but anyway, so he was our manager in AAA, and he called me into the office. I just had lunch with my parents and my girlfriend, who is my wife now. Um, <clears throat> so we kind of said goodbye, went to went to the field, and he called me in right away. And told me the news and you know got a big hug and um yeah it was just a cool moment obviously um especially since we had a, a good relationship um so i quick called and the, the reason why i was extra special was my uh, wife um was supposed to go back to school she was going to hope college at the time um she was supposed to get back for class um it happened to be labor day um 
and so the hotel that we were all staying at, um, you couldn't get out of the parking lot because they're having a Labor Day parade. <laughs> so she literally couldn't leave. And I thought she had left. And um, so she, she got to stay. Um, so I called my parents right away. And it's like, where are you guys at? Did you get back to the hotel? So they happened to be, they, I think they stopped in the uh, um, gift shop at the field because I had just left and uh, they're going to get something or looking around or wasting time or something. So they're all there and I was able to run upstairs and, you know, give them hugs and tell them the good news and all that stuff. So that was a huge, that was a good memory for me. Um, the day of my start, you know, wasn't really too crazy. Um, you know, I just tried to take it easy and um, stay fo as focused as I could. Um, but definitely, you know, there are moments that I, I can still picture pretty clearly just, um, you know, running out there and my first couple outs. Um, and then after the game, being able to celebrate with my family, there's quite a few people that drove up for the game um, and stayed around for a little bit to congratulate me. And um, yeah, that was a huge memory. Um, I think the other one I usually say is, is pitching in Yankee Stadium you know, walking in there the first time, um, doing the whole Monument Park, um, walking around there, um, and then just warming up for the game, you know, literally less than 50 feet away from Roger Clemens, watching him warm up, and it's like, wow, I'm going to go compete against Roger Clemens here pretty soon. Um, and then, yeah, a couple, you know, when guys like Derek Jeter get announced and they're walking into the box and Jason Giambi and those kind of guys, you're just like, wow, this is crazy. Um, I did have one moment where I started to look up to the upper deck and that's a big no-no. Um, so I quickly averted my eyes back down because it's just, if you start to stare up, um, it gets a little overwhelming if you're not used to it. Um, so those are, those are a couple of the memories I had. Um, you know, it was, it was just cool to go around. Um, we went to Minnesota. I didn't pitch there and I pitched in Toronto and just, you know, those, those stadiums that you've seen on TV, all those years growing up, you know, watching the Tigers and, and the AL East, the old AL East. And, um, a lot of those stadiums got to, got to pitch in, or at least, um, you know, be a part of those, those games. Um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely uh, a fun, fun way to end the year. Folks, again, just a reminder, you're, you're listening to Big League Dreaming, the podcast. We're talking to Andy Van Hecken, a Michigan native who uh, had, a, I guess, a, a nice big cup of coffee in September of 2002, playing for his, uh, I guess, home state, Detroit Tigers. I'm assuming you were a Tigers fan growing up. Uh, you pitched a total of 30 innings in the major leagues, uh, which doesn't sound like a lot. You had a career of five strikeouts, which doesn't seem to be like a lot, and your ERA was 3.0. <laughs> But you know what? I know a lot of people probably talk to you about these numbers, and, and I know we're focusing on this podcast a lot about that that month in September, 21 years ago, 22 years ago. But I think the bigger part of the story, there are a couple parts of your story that's really interesting, is that you didn't give up. After that 2002 season, you you kept at it in the minors, playing you know um, internationally, playing in Japan, Korea. You know, you you uh, played independent ball. I mean, I'm really curious about all of that. Uh, but before we go into some of some of those years, and you played in other organizations in the MLB as well, uh, but never at the major league level. Um, let's get to the connection between you and Zach because I don't want to lose that before <laughs> before we run out of time. So um, you are now taking over as the pitching coach, and you're left. Let's part. Of, we haven't said this yet. You're a left-handed pitcher, uh, yep. Andy, and Zach, my oldest son was on this podcast it was also a left-handed pitcher and um he's about 10 years younger than you and i remember when you were you know going through all that and you were you had the limelight on you and i went huh that never threw you know high velocity right and i went wait a minute here's a guy playing at the major league level that just threw a complete game shutout against major league hitters and he's throwing what 89 90 mixing up his pitches that crafty left-hander I think in 2024, I don't think you get a chance anywhere throwing 89, 90 as right. a left-handed pitcher, right? You guys, you got to be mid to upper 90s already. So for me, I thought, well, hey, if 
if Andy Van Hecken can make it from Holland, Michigan, you know, playing in the, in the North, right? Why couldn't mm-hmm. a kid from, from also 10 years younger make it someday? So I always felt like you were inspirational, but Zach, why don't you tell Mr. Van Hecken your connection <laughs> that you, that you don't even, that he doesn't even know about. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I haven't pitched for the Tigers. Um, that's not <laughs> it. That's not where my dad was going with that. Um, yeah, but it was, uh, 2012. So I graduated from Davenport, finished my playing career at Davenport. And then I, I worked in minor league baseball for two years, full time, 2012, 2013, just, uh, stadium operations. And then I got a call, um, from John Sparks from, from Calvin, Calvin college at the time, he was the head coach there. And my mm-hmm. pitching coach at Davenport was Mike Spiegel. They had a good relationship and, um, mentioned that the pitching coach job available, it was available at Calvin at the time. And this was winter time. Um, interviewed with Coach Sparks, and uh, he brought me on to his staff, and I was the pitching coach at tw- at Calvin for the 2014 what. season. Yep. All right. Well, there yeah. you go. Yeah, that's a definitely a big connection there. Well, good. Well, how did you like it? I loved it. It was great. We had a we had a great team. We had um uh we had a lot of seniors. It was a very upperclassman team. Um, we. We went, we we took the series from Adrian and then we went to their place for the conference tournament and then they beat us the first game. Um, so we got knocked out and Adrian went on another one of their runs that season. Okay. Uh, was, John uh, Rypel came in the next year. Okay. Was Trevor been dying on that team? I don't know. He may have been too young. So I don't recognize you. that name. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's with us now. I know he went there. He probably came later, but uh, had a really good career. So, wow. Yep. Well, that's yep. pretty cool. Yeah, I just I just did the one year. Um, I then was the head coach for a college wood bat league in uh, in Myrtle Beach, and then I just stayed nice. in the South, and I never came back to smart man to the cold. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that is always kind of uh, why why do I live here? Some of those days, but I mean. I do. I do like Michigan a lot, but yeah, some, some days in this business, it's kind of head scratching, but. So Andy, what, what made you want to go, go into coaching? Cause this is your first major collegiate coaching job, correct? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I finished playing uh, the 2018 season and just kind of, you know, it's like, I, I haven't been home in the summer in 21 years since high school. Um, so I just kind of took it easy and did some random jobs here and there. And I, I always kind of taught lessons um, here and there with, with uh, Coach Mike Paul, who um, is in Grand Rapids that we can talk about more later, I'm sure. But um, um, yeah, and then, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I was around here and then I was doing lessons and then COVID kind of hit. And yeah, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to get into for my next kind of career, um, whether it was just being coaching lessons or, you know, I, I helped out Highland High where I went to school. Um, I don't know. I just had about three or four things that I was <clears throat> juggling and wasn't committing to seriously. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Coach Paul, actually, I think um, they approached him for the Calvin job. Um, and then uh, he's, you know, his uh, youngest son's a senior in high school this year so he wanted to be available to watch that um, and then he kind of recommended me um, and then yeah I interviewed or <clears throat> talked to the head coach Kevin Van Dyne um, and just really didn't have any intentions of taking the job to be honest with you um, but after talking with him and kind of him explaining what they're all about and just his personality and passion um, I was like you know I've always wondered um about being a pitching coach haven't had the opportunity at at that level um so I thought you know this is a great place to try it out you know it's not far away um you know I'm in Grand Rapids a couple days a week anyways for for different baseball stuff um so I thought it would be a good opportunity to, to at least try um and see if I liked um, college baseball and, and the pitching coach um, job or role, um, whether that's, you know, at college or, or professional, I, I thought that might be an option someday. So, like I said, this is just a good um, 
good spot for me to try it out. And, you know, um, we did a winter ball or uh, fall ball this past fall. And it was, it was really, really good to meet all the guys. And um, I enjoyed it a lot. And at first it was a little, um, a little challenging, you know, you walk in there, I think we had like 22 pitchers. Um, I'm sure as you know, and you're, you're trying to like figure out who everybody is and what they throw and how are we going to get all these guys into the game and um, enough innings. So it's, it's challenging for sure, but um, uh, I think it'll be great. And we start next week and I'm really excited to see everybody again um, and kind of get this season going. Although I'm very, very scared of the weather. I, I hate cold. Uh -huh cold weather games, especially, I don't mind it. I never minded it too much when I was pitching, but the days where I wasn't pitching, just kind of sitting in the dugout in the corner trying to stay warm was awful. So well, I think just, that's wait, the just wait yeah. until it's too cold to play. And then they say, well, if we move the game to Davenport, they have a turf field, <laughs> we could still play. Oh, okay. and, but we, it has to be at night because, you know, there's games before and then it's just even colder. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm looking into some, maybe some, one of those electric vests that I can put underneath my jersey. I'm looking into everything, so. Well, you have got your work cut out for you then, if you've ever done this. Um, yeah. But you got a taste of it in the fall, like you said, and that was yeah. a good chance for you to kind of like, okay, now I know what I'm getting myself into. But I think that's part of the reason Zach moved, went back to the South after the one year, because he's like, there's no way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't well, the four that. the forty innings or the forty games. I don't know if that's still a rule for Division three uh, college baseball, but you could only we could only play forty games, and you have so many pitchers. There's only so many innings yeah. to go around. That was a big challenge for our pitching staff. Yeah, have all these kids, and they don't throw enough. Like you don't have like all these injuries and yeah. things like that. Um, so trying to get kids some playing time, they're with the school, but also trying to be as competitive as possible. Um, yeah. so that that was definitely a hurdle for me but uh, but they had a great we had a great season in 2014 for sure yeah that's yeah it will definitely be challenging um but yeah I'm looking forward to it and um yeah I, you know they had a uh, about a, a 500 year last year I think and um you know it seemed like the hitting was definitely the strength last year um but this fall I think the pitchers kind of took a step forward we have a lot of young guys so um they got a lot of a lot of freshmen got innings last year so it'll be exciting I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge um uh, real quick while I stay on the topic of today's pitcher um what 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 are you seeing since you've been training as well pitchers I mean was I was I correct when I said if you're throwing 89 90 as a left-handed pitcher you're probably yeah. not going to get a lot of looks yeah it's unfortunately you know I'm I've never been a fan of the radar gun for obvious reasons. Um, but you know, I, I see the value in it and, you know, it's an easy way to just look at a guy and, you know, project like, okay, at least he throws hard. You can always, you know, go to a facility or what, whatever, and, and tell right away if he's going to be a major league caliber or even a professional caliber pitcher, um, just by watching him for, for a few throws. So it's an easy way to, just kind of separate some of the kids. Um, you know, I, fortunately I threw harder when I was in high school. I think I topped out at 93 or something like that. So I at least showed that, um, I could get there and, you know, I was six, three, probably one sixty. So I, I was pretty skinny. I had room to grow. Um, so I probably projected out a little bit, you know, that I could maybe throw a little bit harder even still. Um, and then, you know, I got that chance because of that. And then I was able to throw well in the minor leagues and, and keep moving up um, the system. And, you know, I, I got my chance that way where I, you know, got the opportunity because I threw hard and I was left-handed. Um, but yeah, you're right. I think now it's, it's, it's tough to, tough to get signed if you, if you're not, you know, at least low nineties, um, you know, it seems like everybody's got to throw mid mid nineties now to get signed or to get a chance. Um, even D one now is it's hard to get into if you don't throw, um, you know, low nineties. So, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's unfortunate for some of the guys that can really pitch well and, you know, can have that moxie on the mound and can kind of control the game and, and change speeds and, 
Um, I, I hope there's a shift back towards it. You know, it seems like baseball's always shifting with, you know, the analytics and everything. And, you know, you know, guys are swinging different these days. And, you know, it seemed like in the nineties, everybody went to sinker slider. Now it's more forcing curveball, and, you know, everything kind of just changes. Um, it seems like every few years. So, um, hopefully we get back to just finding guys that can pitch and, you know, um, have the makeup and can throw strikes and, um, get guys out. But, um, Maddox was always a huge influence on me. I loved watching him pitch and just the way he competed and just seemed like he outsmarted everybody and obviously dominated for a really long time. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's, I try to give everybody a chance when I, when it's up to me, um, and not pay attention too much to the radar gun, but, um, I can see why, why it is the way it is. Well, uh, dad, we should mention one of Ty's questions, right? Yeah, we should. So, yeah. so Ty, uh, sent us a couple questions for you. Right. Um, one of them that he came up with was, are, are there any specific teammates or coaches that have left a, a lasting impression on you? I and mean, you mentioned Bruce Fields. Yeah, Bruce was a great manager. Um, I had, I don't know if you'll remember the name, Burt Hooten. Um, he pitched for the Dodgers um, back in the 70s, early 80s, um, and pitched for the Cubs and probably some other teams as well. But um, So I had him with when I was with the Astros in the minor leagues. Um, he was just an old school no nonsense pitching coach. A lot of the guys did not care for him, um, especially the young guys. Um, I always kind of related to him. Um, I always found that he kind of had a similar um, humor as my father. So I kind of got along with him really well from the start. Um, but he just, I was able to be, he was my pitching coach for probably two and a half years or something like that. Um, and, you know, we, we developed a pretty good relationship and, uh, he was one of the reasons I went to Korea. Um, I was with the Astros in AAA and, and had two pretty good seasons. Um, he actually, my last spring training with the Astros, I walked, they were going through a lot of transition. I think they had just changed ownerships. Um, and so they had a lot of new people in there. Um, so their minor league director sat me down the last day and was like, in his, in his office and said, Hey, you know, I, I want to cut you. Um, but, uh, Bert Hooten wants, wants you on his team. And, you know, so he's, you're going to go to, you're going to go to triple a and he's like, we don't have a spot for you right now. Um, so you're just going to go there and, you know, you're, you're under his care, whatever he wants to do. So I'm like, uh okay <laughs> um so he based Bert basically um begged them to keep me on the team and um so I went up there to we were in Oklahoma City that year um so I drove there and we got there and met with him and he said yeah you're just gonna have to and teams back in back then I don't know if it's the same way sometimes you do that right before the season, you'll carry an extra guy because it seems like somebody in the big leagues or somebody on your team might start on the DL and you never know. It's nice to have an extra guy there. So he said, you're going to start, start the year on the, I don't know if it was, it was just not disabled list, but um, just like, I don't know, whatever. I wasn't on the roster. So he said, you're basically going to be my bullpen coach. So um, I was, went down for the first week or so and sat in the bullpen and kind of let the guys know who's up to bat, who's coming up to bat. You know, I answer the phone, you know, so-and-so get ready. Um, and then, you know, and then somebody got hurt or somebody got called up and they put me on the roster. Um, so I was kind of went from that to the last guy in the bullpen to the long guy to, you know, maybe the lefty specialist for a few games. And then I ended up closing um a game and then that was all led up to I think uh Memorial Day and then my manager was like do you want to start I'm like yes I've always been a starter I want to start so I ended up starting um and then I ended up 
having a really good year. And I think I finished second in the league in ERA um, and um, had a chance to go to the all-star game. I said, no, thanks. I'm going to go home and see my wife. Um, but yeah, it turned out to be a really good year. Um, and obviously have Bert Hooten to thank for that. Otherwise I would have been, I don't know, maybe done with baseball or back to independent ball. Um, well, see, so yeah, this is, this is where I find your story really interesting. Cause like what's, what's going through your head when you're in the bullpen as the bullpen coach, <laughs> Yeah. when you know, you can be a starter, when you know, you I mean, you, you, ex, you played in the major leagues and had success at the major league level, right? Yeah. You're sitting there in that, in that bullpen. What makes you, what's going through your head at the time going like, okay, so be it. Or are you going like, I can't wait for my moment. I mean, how do you get through the days? How did you persevere? Yeah, I, I was just hoping that I got a chance and I was doing everything I could to prepare for that chance. You know, I was, I was, I was working hard and, um, you know, I um, become friends with the, our strength coach and trying to pick his brain like, Hey, how can I get stronger or whatever I need to do? And, so we, you know, started working with him a little bit more and just kind of, you know, you in those moments of, you know, I almost getting cut or, you know, you go through some some streaks during the season where you have a couple of bad outings in a row. You kind of look in the mirror and, you know, you're like, all right, what am I doing here? You know, you look back at some of your mechanics, try to figure out what's going on. Um, so you kind of, yeah, like I said, look in the mirror. How can I get better? How can I get ready? Um, and, you know, it's kind of out of your hands for, you know, um, as far as when you're going to get innings, when you're going to get on the roster. Um, so I just wanted to be ready. Um, you know, it's it's definitely stressful. You know, back then, um, you know, you're not you're not making a ton of money. You know, the off season's long and, um, you know, it's you know, I was married and, um, you know, it is, it is stressful because they can literally cut you and you're, you're done. Like, and you go home and you have to, you know, find a job. And I, I didn't go to college, <laughs> you know, I didn't know what I was going to do if I didn't play baseball. Like you said, I, I went through independent ball a couple of times and, um, they pay you literally nothing. Um, so those, those times you're in independent ball, it's really hard to get by. Um, in AAA, you can make a lot better money, but, um, you know, like I said, it's April through um, August and those other months you're not getting paid. So um, it's tough, but um, yeah, thankfully I was able to get my shot and I took advantage of it and, and pitched pretty well. And um, by the end of the season, went back in Bert's office and had a talk with him and he's like, I don't know what it is, but they don't like you here. So don't come back. <laughs> Um, he's like, as much as I, I want you here and pitching for me, he's like, I, for your sake, I wouldn't come back here. So, um, after that season, I got offers to come back to Houston, um, and a couple other ones, um, ended up getting some major league invites, which I hadn't had for a couple of years. Um, and then I got my offer from Korea as well. Um, and ultimately chose to go there. Before we run out of time, cause I know you have to go pretty soon here. Tell us about that experience in Korea real quick. Um, it was pretty amazing. It was, um, you know, I would say probably one of my favorite parts about my playing career. Um, at first, it was definitely challenging. Um, it's obviously very different. Um, not only where you're playing, but, you know, your teammates and coaches, um, living situation in the league. Um I, it was hard uh, getting used to kind of the way they played. Sometimes, you know, I played a long time, you know, I think as Americans or the, the American game, we're a little arrogant on thinking how we know, we know how to play the game the correct way all the time. And that may be true or not, you know, strategically, but they do things different there. They do things different in Japan, Taiwan, wherever you go. Um, and usually it's not a major thing, but um, so there are a few occasions early on where I would get frustrated with the coaches and some of the players um, and just trying to get into their head. Like, why, why would you do it that way? Um, and thankfully I, I had a teammate, Brandon Knight, who had played there a couple of years already before me. So he was kind of coaching me along, teaching me, 
how they do things there um, and just, you know, how to act, I guess, in a certain way, because there are definitely guys that have gone over there that have been major league players and struggled. And a lot of it is just with that part of it, that they just mentally can't get over like certain things or they want to do things their way. Um, the player does. And, you know, sometimes they don't like that. Um, but eventually getting over that, um, I grew to really love the game over there. You know, I'm sure you've seen clips of their fans. Uh, their fans are amazing and they make a lot of noise and sing songs and do all their cheers. And um, they're very supportive. Even, you know, I went through a rough stretch there for a minute in Korea and they always stood behind me um, and it ended up pitching five and a half years there. And it, it got better and better every year. Um, just kind of learning, learning the culture and learning, you know, simple things, just where to go to eat and where to spend free time. Um, and then, you know, figuring out a rhythm with my wife when, when she was coming and, and when she was, um, you know, how long she was staying and all that stuff, all the little stuff that um, makes life easier. Um, so, yeah, I, I loved it. Um, you know, I wish, you know, I, was, I wish I could have gone back there one more year. Um, but, you know, things didn't work out and they went a different direction and probably for the better. But, um, you know, it was, it was great. I love my time over there. Zach, I'm sure you have some follow-up questions to that. Yeah, so can we find you at some K-pop concerts, Coach and Hakim? <laughs> um, no, I, I, <laughs> I definitely, I know that's another thing that just, I don't know if it's hearing it every day at the stadium, you know, a lot of their songs and they'll do um, little performances here and there throughout the game. And so it's just, <laughs> just, you're always hearing it and you're like, oh, you know, this isn't too bad, so... <laughs> I definitely learned to like it a little bit. Um, concerts, I don't know about that, but um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say no, I guess. Awesome. You heard it here first. BTS. <laughs> Coach Van Hacken. Yeah. Number one, number one fan. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, we really appreciate your, your time today. Um, obviously, this podcast is about, you know, fulfilling, fulfilling your dreams and taking it to the next level. What advice would you have for people that are, you know, maybe frustrated with things, how they're going and, and they're persevering and they're just trying to get through it. And they believe in what they're doing. They believe in their talents and their ability. And, you know, they're, they're fighting adversity along the way. What, what advice would you have for them? Um, yeah, it's, it can be tough. Uh, you know, I just always believed in my ability and um, just always wanted to put myself in a good position and, and be prepared um, for when that time came, you know, I was, I think my career, I look back and people have asked me, you know, how, how I got there, how I lasted and, you know, how did I get here? And I, I definitely think there's some luck um, with it, but I also think I, I worked really hard and I worked um, to be prepared, like I said, um, to be prepared for the opportunities and just, um, you know, kind of relentless on um, trying to get there. You know, I I went to independent ball. Not a lot of players like to do that. You know, I've had relationships with guys in the past, um, you know, trying to help them through their careers. And some guys, we talk about independent ball, and they're like, ah, I don't know if I want to do that. It's like, well, you might not have a choice. Um, you know, so I, I did that three different times. Um and I think having a good attitude and work ethic, I know for sure I got picked up by the Astros because specifically, they, and they even told me this, they said they signed me to come in to double A and um, be kind of a mentor or, a, you know, show the younger guys how to be professional. Um, so I, they signed me for that reason and I ended up pitching well enough that I kept advancing and got to AAA and then, you know, like I said, got to Korea. So um, being professional and just working your butt off. And if you want to, if you want, if you have a dream, if it's to be professional or, you know, get to the major leagues, um, you just got to work your butt off and believe and, and keep pushing yourself. Zach, anything else you want to add? 
Uh, so for the Calvin pitching staff, are they going to be doing long distance or are we talking sprints? Are you a sprint short <laughs> gassers guy or are you this a is, long distance is, guy? It's a huge yeah, debate. This has uh, been debated um, and is a little controversial with, with Coach Paul, which I, I should mention Coach Paul um, quickly. Um, he was my high school travel pitching coach. Um, and then he, um, we got in contact when I was about 30 years old. And, um, and I think I just finished my first minor league season with the Astros. Um, found me, we got together at a white caps function and he said, Hey, you got to come into our facility and, and check out what we're doing. And it was a, it was a workout program based, uh, specifically for, um, you know, throwing harder and, and, um, um, just training all the muscles that we use as, as pitchers and hitters, um, you know, just kind of specifically getting stronger in those areas. So I did. And, uh, you know, I went from that 85, 86 to back up to 90, 91 and, and one off season just from the workout and doing one little mechanical tweak um, and working with him. So obviously I stayed with him the rest of my career. Um, he's been my mentor ever since um, pitching lessons. And now I run those same classes here in Holland. Um, and we do it. I do it with him in, in Rockford and Grand Rapids and then uh, in Holland here by myself with a couple other coaches. So um, I would be mistaken not mentioning how important he was for my career. Um, and that, that piece of it, the, um, you know, the, the getting in shape and, and doing the program the right way as far as getting my the right um muscles and everything in shape and, and stronger so um yeah sorry what was your question i i just went off on a tangent but so are you distance or oh, sprints yeah sorry um so yes he is very much sprint 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 based on all the science and i see that and i agree with it but there's something in me that is old school and i I think the whole mental challenge of doing long distance is still applicable for a pitcher. Um, so we do mostly sprints, but I will definitely mix in some longer distance here and there. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zach, uh, or coach, if people want to find uh, what's happening at Calvin baseball, do you know the website or, or you're not, a, I'm assuming you're not on social media. I'm not on social media at all. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just type in Calvin baseball into Google and it kind of works out. Well, yeah, thank you for, thank you for being too. on the show today. We appreciate it. Zach, why don't you take, take us up? <clears throat> yep. Um, appreciate your time, Coach. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode of Big League Dreaming, the podcast. Connect with us on uh, Twitter. It's at BLDPOD on TikTok. And send us an email. It's bigleaguedreaming at gmail.com. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Coach.